Good afternoon. It is my privilege as rector to welcome each of you to this Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception as we begin our annual observance of 24 hours for the Lord and solemn exposition of the Most Blessed Sacrament, which is more commonly known as 40 hours devotion. The initiative of 24 hours for the Lord was begun by our Holy Father Pope Francis during the 2015-2016 Jubilee Year of Mercy as a moment of intense prayer that will enable people to touch the grandeur of God's mercy. Pope Francis has asked that this initiative be continued as a means for all of us to experience the richness of God's mercy. At the conclusion of Mass, we will process with the Blessed Sacrament to the front vestibule of the Shrine, where our Lord will remain exposed throughout the night for all those who desire to come to the Shrine. During the next two days, we will have adoration throughout the day in the Blessed Sacrament Chapel, which is to the right of this main sanctuary. And then beginning at five o'clock in the afternoon, we will continue exposition throughout the night in the vestibule. We're pleased to have Archbishop Timothy Brolio as the celebrant for Mass this evening. Archbishop Brolio is the Archbishop for the Military Services, the President of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, and a member of the National Shrine Board of Trustees. As Archbishop for the Military Services, Archbishop Brolio serves military personnel and families, patients in Veterans Administration hospitals, and federal employees serving outside the boundaries of the United States in 134 countries. We welcome those who join us at home through our live stream broadcast, the Eternal World Television Network, Catholic TV, Catholic Faith Network, Maria Vision, Salt and Light Television, and Shalom TV. A very special word of thanks to the Knights of Columbus who have made tonight's broadcast possible. May these days of Eucharistic devotion bring God's abundant mercies upon all who come before our Lord here at Mary's Shrine, as well as for those who join us at home. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Dear sisters and brothers, I am grateful for Monsignor Rossi's welcome and the privilege to begin these 24 hours with the Lord together with all of you. I thank Father Ayala, the maestro, choir, and organists, the sister servants of Mary Immaculate, the Knights of Columbus, and all who make these celebrations possible and prayerful. Ours is a great opportunity. We gather at the Eucharistic table, and then we will march, watch, and pray. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. We implore your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as the feast of our salvation draws ever closer, so may we press forward all the more eagerly toward the worthy celebration of the Paschal Mystery. <clears throat> Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, this is what I commanded my people. Listen to my voice. Then I will be your God and you shall be my people. Walk in all the ways that I command you so that you may prosper. But they obeyed not, nor did they pay heed. They walked in the hardness of their evil hearts and turned their backs, not their faces, to me. From the day that your fathers left the land of Egypt, even to this day, I have sent you untiringly all my servants, the prophets. Yet they have not obeyed me nor paid heed. They have stiff-necked their necks and done worse than their fathers. When you speak all these words to them, they will not listen to you either. When you call to them, they will not answer you. Say to them, this is the nation that does not listen to the voice of the Lord, it's God, or take correction. Faithfulness has disappeared. The word itself is banished from their speech. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. And when the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the crowds were amazed. Some of them said, by the power of Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others, to test him, asked him for a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, and house will fall against house. And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that it is by Beelzebul that I drive out demons. If I then drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your own people drive them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his palace, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the armor on which he relied and distributes the spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. The Gospel of the Lord.
Dear sisters and brothers in Christ here in the Basilica and those who follow us by other means of social communication, the mere mention of 40 hours brings back wonderful memories from of my childhood in a large suburban parish. The three days always began with a solemn mass and procession at noon on Sunday. Devotions would be in the evening on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And each night, there would be dozens of priests who would fill the sanctuary area. They included former associates, as we called parochial vicars in those days, sons of the parish, and others. Only later did I learn that there was a social dimension to the gathering. In fact, the practice of 40 hours was brought to my home diocese of Cleveland in the late 19th century as a way to foster fraternity by gathering priests who served in rural areas, providing fellowship and support. Of course, the devotions, confessions, and the opportunity to pray before the Blessed Sacrament brought immense spiritual benefits to the parishes. It was truly a time of, to experience in ourselves the fruits of his redemption. Happily, Pope Francis's 24 hours before the Lord have opened the door for all of us who find at Mary's house a place of prayer and devotion to experience a special time of grace in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. It is good to listen, to cast aside distraction, and to rejoice in the unique presence of the Lord. The first reading is clear. Opportunities abound for life. Only it is necessary to hear, to listen. So begins the charge to Israel. O oh, hear, O Israel. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said it so well. We are silent at the beginning of the day because God must be the first one to say the first word. We are silent when night falls because the last word belongs to God as well. Our world does not afford us for that silent one who loves us. Noise fills our environment, be it from vehicles or music blaring or the constant talking on television. It is difficult to find silence and even more difficult to cultivate the space that we need in order to listen to the voice of the Lord. The austere season of Lent calls us to go into the desert with the Lord, to spend time with him and to hear his voice. We keep silence, Bonhoeffer also wrote, before we listen to the word, so that our thoughts might be directed to the word. Just as a child keeps quiet when he enters the father's room, we keep silence after hearing the word so that it might still resound, live, and want to remain in us. For these days, we will pause before the Lord of the universe and set aside distractions. Lent is always a time of clearing the decks so that we might contemplate what is truly important. It is a retreat for the whole church during which we recognize the gifts we have received and take stock of how we have used them. The Sunday readings this year call us to recognize the great gift that was our baptism. 
we were reborn into eternal life so that we might walk even more directly to the fullness of that life in heaven. Our Lenten penance and prayer also offer the occasion to recenter everything on Christ. We cultivate our hunger for Him and we meet Him in those most in need, especially those who receive our charity, another element of our Lenten observance. It might seem so simple, but notice how some deform the Word of God so as not to hear it, accusing Jesus of casting out demons with the power from the devil. But he clearly tells us that he is stronger. He reminds us forcefully that a house divided against itself cannot stand. Is not one of our intentions in these days an earnest prayer for unity? The Gospel passage today follows the one in which the Lord has taught the Our Father. It is very clear that the reign of God has arrived. The signs are evident. The blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk, lepers are cured, the mute speak, and the power of Satan is restrained. However, some continue to close themselves off from those signs. They want to attribute them to the devil. They want to alter his message to eliminate any demand on us. Some voices muddy the clear moral teaching of the church in matters of the dignity of the human person, human sexuality, and the sanctity of holy matrimony. Sometimes we hear a suggestion of a difference between teaching or doctrine and pastoral care. However, we know that nothing truly pastoral fails to begin with the truth. The object of our mission is the salvation of souls. We can never be distracted from that clear task of evangelization, which is a clear preaching of the truth, whose name is Jesus Christ. This year, the magnificent passages from the fourth gospel on Sundays show us Jesus as the living water, the light, and life. In fact, the well-armed man is the devil, but the stronger one is Jesus Christ. The allegiance to him is always the determining factor. We have to listen, we have to live attentive to the word of God. It is easy to slip away and fall under the domi domination of false doctrines. So we learn to place our trust in him alone knowing that he is stronger than, in, than the world, any temptation, any trial, or any difficulty can be a great source of consolation. He took us over in baptism and consumes us in the Eucharist. It is enough to gather with him and to want what he wills for us. We celebrate these Eucharistic devotions in the context of the Eucharistic renewal established by the bishops of the United States. We are challenged to enter more deeply into the mystery of the Eucharist so as to understand it better, even though St. Thomas Aquinas tells us that faith supplies for the defect of the senses. You and I are here because we want to participate in the unique sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And we recognize that the sacred bread we take is our heavenly, super essential substance. 
we recognize what St. Paul VI stated so clearly in Mysterium Fidei. Christ is present in his, in his church in a way that surpasses all the others. His presence in the sacrament of the Eucharist, which is for this reason a more consoling source of devotion, a lovelier object of contemplation, and holier in what it contains than in the, all the other sacraments. Being in this basilica, we cannot fail to remember that she, the Blessed Virgin Mary, was the first bearer of the Lord, body, blood, soul, and divinity. When the Eucharist is celebrated by the words of consecration, Jesus, as it were, descends from heaven to earth in the hands of the celebrant. That action parallels the fiat of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The link is priceless and reminds us of the Lord's saying that the one who does the will of the Father is mother, brother, and sister to him. It is different from the experience of 50 or 60 years ago, but also the same. As we begin our 40 hours devotion and respond to the invitation of Pope Francis for 24 hours with the Lord, we are mindful of our participation in the long tradition of the church and we give thanks for this opportunity to be renewed by his real presence. United to Christ in the Eucharist, let us seek the blessings that will bring us to everlasting life. That the sacramental grace given in the Eucharist may help transform the body of Christ on earth and allow us to reflect more perfectly God's unconditional love and mercy for the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that God will bless all those who lead and serve our nation, especially our nation's military personnel. May their dedicated labor foster true peace and freedom. To the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace throughout areas of the world, torn by war, persecution, violence, and aggression, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that this Lenten season will encourage many to devote their lives in service to the poor, the marginalized, immigrants and refugees, the sick and the elderly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That many will respond with faith and courage to God's call to serve the church as priests, deacons, and religious. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have asked for our prayers and for the intentions entrusted by our benefactors and pilgrims to the National Shrine's Lenten Remembrance, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may partake of the heavenly banquet God has prepared for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill your people, O Lord, we pray, with hope in your divine mercy. May the gift of the body and blood of your Son help us on our pilgrim way to eternal life. 
through Christ our Lord. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable 
to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and all this holy church. Cleanse your people, Lord, we pray, from every taint of wickedness, that their gifts may be pleasing to you, and do not let them cling to false joys, for you promise them the rewards of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that inter eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of this saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Wilton our Bishop, and his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, where we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are you now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of the addition of my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your salvation, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.